Good morning. Good morning. All right. You can't say good morning back, so good morning, honk. Yeah, very good, very good, very good. As you can see, the real song leader's not here, and you have to put up with me today, but we're going we're gonna to worship God, and that's what we're here to do. Song number 108 will be our first song. Our first song will be, The Lord is in His Holy Temple, 108. And let's all sing. The Lord is in His holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before Him. Keep silence. Our next song will be song number 877, please. Song number 877. Won't it be wonderful there? This is the first and third verse. 877. Let's all sing. When with the Savior we enter the glory land, won't it be wonderful there? And in the troubles and cares of the story land, won't it be wonderful there? Won't it be wonderful there? Having no burdens to bear, and joyous and singing with heart bells all ringing, oh, won't it be wonderful there? There where the tempest will never be sweeping us, won't it be wonderful there? Sure that forever the Lord will be keeping us. Won't it be wonderful there? Won't it be wonderful there? Having no burdens to bear. Joyously singing with heart bells all ringing. Oh, won't it be wonderful there? I hope you're on the remind app. If not, you and me or Andy, so you can get those updates. Um, Miss Louise has a sign up sheet to adopt a pew. Our pews are in need of cleaning. Um, we would like to get that done uh, before Sunday um, because we are coming inside next Sunday for Easter, so I hope uh, you can all make it. So we'll have Bible study at 9 30 a.m. and then worship at 10 30. And then we'll come in on Sunday night at 6 p.m. We hope to see you there for that. Um, Let's make sure we wish your uh, happy birthdays in April. Uh, and also, maybe Carter's here. Uh, Otto, Tyler, and Nick are excited uh, to welcome Carter. Next song will be song number 469, please. 469. Faith is the victory. That was our lesson this morning. Faith. 469. And once again, we'll sing the first and third verse. Faith is the victory. And let's all sing. Encamped along the hills of light, ye Christian soldiers rise and press the battle ere the night shall bump the bellowing skies. Against the foes it fails below, let all our strength be hurled. Faith is the victory we know that overcomes the world. Faith is the victory, and faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. To him that overcomes the foe, white rain that shall be given. Before the angels he shall know his name confessed in heaven. Then onward from the hills of light, our hearts with love aflame, will vanquish all the host of night in Jesus' conquering name. Because faith is the victory, and faith is the victory, oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. We have our scripture reading and opening prayer. We'll sing song number 827 for this sweet hour.
seasons of distress and grief, my soul has often found relief, and oft escaped the tempter snare by thy return, sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, thy wings shall my petition bear to him whose truth and faithfulness engage the waiting soul to bless. And since he bids me seek his face, believe his word and trust his grace. I'll cast on him my every care and wait for the sweet hour of prayer. This morning's scripture reading will come from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 and 4. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 and 4. For I delivered to you first the ball that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried and He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for our many blessings. We thank you for this opportunity that we have to be here this morning. Uh, Father, we ask that you be with us as we sing songs, as we worship Father, and gather around the Lord's table, and that we do all these things in accordance to your will. Father, we pray for those that are in the hospitals and those that are sick. We ask that you'd be with them and that uh, you would let them gain the help and take the regular steps of life. Father, we ask you also ask you to be with those that are traveling. We ask that you would turn them back to us safely. Sing song number 365. 365 is how beautiful. We'll sing all three verses. Following this song, we'll partake of the Lord's Supper. 365. Once again, let's all sing. How beautiful the hands that serve the wine and the bread and the sons of the earth. How beautiful the feet that walk the long dusty roads and the hill to the cross. How beautiful, how beautiful, how beautiful is the body of Christ. How beautiful the rain. Waits for her groom with his light in her eyes. How beautiful when humble hearts give the fruit of your life so that others may live. How beautiful, how beautiful, how beautiful is the body of Christ. How beautiful the feet that bring the sound of good news and the love of the King. How beautiful the hands that serve the wine and the bread and the sons of the earth. How beautiful, how beautiful, how beautiful the body of Christ. As we prepare our minds for the Lord's Supper, I'd like to read a couple of verses. I'll be reading from Matthew 
chapter 26, and I will start with verse 26. And it reads, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on, until that day when I drink it here. Let's give thanks for the cup. Dear God, likewise, we ask your blessings on, the, on this cup that the Christians represents Christ's blood as he got on the cross for us. We pray that everyone partakes to this as we will please grant it to you. And these things we ask in Jesus Christ's name. Pleasure, Lord's Supper. Uh, we also have an opportunity to give and this this offering helps us keep the Lord's work for the and pray out the world. And let's give thanks for this offering. Dear God, we thank you for this day that you gave to us and thank you for our many blessings. And we thank you for this opportunity to take this offering and we pray that this helps reach the lost souls who are locally in the world. And again, let's all sing. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing. Hallelujah, hallelujah, thou burning sun with golden beam, thou silver moon with softer gleam. Oh, praise Him, oh, praise Him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Father, praise the Son, and praise the Spirit three in one. Oh, praise Him, oh, praise Him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <coughs> the invitation song today will be song number 915. 915, Trust and Obey. That will be the invitation song. Our song before the lesson will be song number 895. Song number 895. All Living Glory. Let's sing the first and third verse, and then we'll have our lesson. 895. And let's all sing. I don't like to stay here longer than men's allotted days. And watch the fleeting changes of life's uneven ways. But if my Savior calls me to that sweet home on high, I'll live with Him forever in glory by and by. Oh yes, I'll live in glory by and by. I'll tell and sing love story there on high. There with my dear Redeemer, no more to die. Oh, yes, I'll live in glory, by and by. The end 
and I know is nearing, by faith I look away, to yonder throne superb, oh, the land of endless day, I'll cling to him forever, and look beyond the sky, and live with him forever, in glory by and by, oh yes, I'll live in glory by and by, I'll tell him some love story, there on high, there with my dear Redeemer, no more to die, oh yes, I'll live in glory by and by, oh yes, I'll live in glory by and by. of his body being on display in Washington, D.C. and a few other cities, Abraham Lincoln was laid to rest in a cemetery near his home in Springfield, Illinois. But Lincoln did rest in peace. In 1876, there was a plot to raid his grave and steal his body. It didn't work. Then 11 years later, because of rumors that his body wasn't in the grave, his coffin was dug up and opened to confirm it was there. And it was, but the rumors continued. Fourteen years after that, the coffin was dug up again. Both times, witnesses were present and testified Lincoln was still in the grave. In all, Lincoln's body was moved 17 times, and his coffin opened five times before finally resting in peace 36 years, 36 years later inside a steel cage, beneath two tons of concrete poured 10 feet high over his coffin. Lincoln is still in his graves, and there were witnesses to that. But Jesus is not in his grave, and there are witnesses to that also. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 3, I deliver to you as of first importance that I also received that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, and to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. Over 500 witnesses saw the risen Savior, and most of them were still alive when Paul wrote to the Corinthians. Now what's interesting about our text this morning is that John only focused on three of the 500 witnesses who saw the resurrection of Christ. First, there was John himself, who always referred to himself as the other disciple or the disciple Jesus loved. Then there was Peter, and then Mary Magdalene, three witnesses. And what we're going to do is focus on what each of them saw and how it affected them. And we're going to start with John. We're going to start with John. John was with Peter when Mary Magdalene came and reported Jesus' body we're told the other disciple, John, outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the lining clothes lying there, but he did not go in. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. There in John chapter 20, in verse 4 and 5. Now in the Gospels, Peter also seems to get first billing. Whenever we read about them in the Gospels, it's always Peter, James, and John. John was always last, and Peter was always first, but now John got to be first. He outran Peter and went to the grave. And when John got to, gra to the grave, it says they looked inside, and he saw and believed. But then we're told, as yet they, Peter and John, did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead in John chapter 20, verse 9. But wait, if John didn't understand the scripture about Jesus rising from the dead, what did he believe? Well, all John knew about anything was that Jesus had taught him. Mark chapter 8 verse 31 tells us that Jesus then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests and teachers of the law, that he must be killed and after three days rise again. And Mark chapter 9 verse 31 says Jesus told them again, the Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of men. They will kill 
kill him, and after three days he will rise. And as Jesus was going into Jerusalem for the last time, he again told them, in Mark chapter 10, 33 and 34, The son condemn him to death, and will hand him over to the Gentiles. They will mock him and spit on him, flood him, and kill him. Three days later, he will rise. Over and over again, Jesus drove home the fact that the grave would not hold him. He'd rise on the third day. Now John sees that the grave is empty, and he remembered what Jesus had said. John paid attention. All right, John paid attention. He may not have known the Old Testament prophecies that spoke of Jesus' resurrection, but he knew Jesus, and he believed him. But notice, the Gospel doesn't tell us that John told anybody else. Why not? Well, maybe he didn't feel he had enough evidence. By contrast, it almost seems like Peter didn't believe. In John chapter 20, verse 10, that Simon Peter came following him and went into his tomb. He saw the lining clothes lying there, and the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the lining clothes, but folded up in place by itself. In John chapter 26 and 7, we then were told that the disciples went back to their homes. We're not told that Peter felt anything or said anything when he saw the empty grave. He just went home. In fact, nowhere anywhere in the Gospels are we told that Peter believed at this point that Jesus had risen from the grave. Did Peter not believe? Well, it's possible, but I think it goes deeper than that. Just like John, Peter wouldn't have seen the grave clothing all by themselves. The face cloth folded up in a place by itself. No grave robber would ever bother to remove the grave clothes from the body. The evidence was there, and it was obvious Jesus had risen. Peter's faith had been crippled by his denial of Jesus. He didn't think Jesus would love him anymore. So what difference would it make? By contrast, John Strogan strongly believed Jesus loved him. Over and over again throughout the Gospel, John describes himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved. In fact, it was John that proclaimed God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. You see, the problem for Peter was that he believed that once he'd messed up, Jesus would never love him again. And so the resurrection was meaningless to him because he didn't think Jesus loved him. Or at least that's what he thought. And, and, and until Peter realized that he was wrong, Jesus did love him, he would forever struggle with the idea of the resurrection. And he wouldn't have told anybody about the risen Christ. And at this point, it seems that Peter didn't tell him. Lastly, we come to Mary. She would seem like a minor character. resurrection involved Mary Magdalene. In every one of the Gospels, she shows up. In fact, Matthew, Mark, and Luke tells us that other women were there at the tomb, but in every Gospel, Mary Magdalene is mentioned first. And even at the crucifixion, when it was the women, not the men, that showed up, Mary Magdalene was always there. So, who is this woman? We don't know much. Mark chapter 16 verse 9 tells us when Jesus rose up early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. And that's it. But once Jesus touched her life, once he healed her pain, she was a faithful follower of Jesus forever. And here we find her at the grave in John chapter 20 and verse 1. It tells us now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Mary saw was that the stone had been rolled away from the tomb, and it seemed she had looked into the tomb, into the tomb and Jesus' body was gone. But then she simply jumped to the conclusion that somebody robbed the grave, and she goes and tells Peter and John. When she returns to the tomb in John chapter 20, verses 14 and 15, we're told she unknowingly speaks to a couple of angels. And then she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if, if you carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. 
Mary is a single-minded woman. Somebody stolen the body, she's going to get it back. She's willing to do whatever is necessary to honor that the Jesus changed her life. Or honor that Jesus could change her life. And then Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father, and your Father, to my God, and your God. In verses 16 and 17 there in John 20. Now I don't know what made Mary realize that this was Jesus, but what she she knew she wanted to cling to him and never let him go. But she listens to Jesus. She lets him go. Because Jesus asked her to. And then she went and announced to his disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. Now what does this tell us about Mary? First it tells us that Mary Magdalene was not an important person. I mean she's only mentioned in two places, the cross and the tomb. She's not found anywhere else in scripture ever. And we hardly know anything about the woman. She didn't give any speeches, write any books, post anything on YouTube or Twitter. But this confirms what I've always believed out of Scripture. God uses people we would think are unimportant to do important things. In Mark chapter 16, verse 9, we're told that when Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Beth. secret. To God, the most important person is the one he can trust with his mission. Matthew chapter 28, verse 10, Jesus told her, and the woman with her, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. So God used an unimportant person to do an important thing, because he could trust her to do what he said. Secondly, despite what I told you about Mary Magdalene not being important, she was important. She was important to God. She mentioned repeatedly in all the She's known to be a woman of courage and determination. Nothing is going to stand between her and her serving Jesus. The men are all in hiding. They've locked their doors and very, very far from the windows, but not this lady. Not this lady. She stands firmly at the cross and she goes early to the tomb. No one is going to stop her from being near to Jesus. She's even willing to go steal Jesus bring him back to the tomb. And they, the Lord have mercy on the God who tries to stop them, right? I've seen women like this. You don't want to mess with them. Now we've looked at how John Peter and Mary dealt with the empty tomb. The question for you this morning is this. What do you do with it? What do you do with the empty tomb? Are you like Peter? Peter recognized that Jesus has risen from the grave. He just didn't talk about it. Something was holding him back. He didn't think Jesus loved him. So, is there something holding you back from telling others about Christ? Could it be that you don't think Jesus loves you all that much? If so, that's not true. Jesus does love you, but if you don't feel it, you won't share it. Are you like John? You believe that if you love Jesus deeply, but again, you're not ready to talk about it. You maybe you don't feel it. you have enough evidence. But once you do, then you You may not understand everything that happens, but you don't feel you need to have all the evidence. You simply love Jesus so much that no one's going to shut you, shut you up about it. Like Mary, are you bold and confident in your faith? Like Mary, are you ready to do whatever is necessary to let others know what Jesus means to you? This morning, if you want to do that, we offer the opportunity for you to be baptized. We would love to do that for you. Forgiveness of sins, we offer that invitation to you also as we stand and as we sing. 115. There's no...
side in the way. What he says we will do. Where he says we will go. And never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. But you trust. It's been about faith. We were in our class this morning. We looked at faith. We looked at the, the faithful ones in God's Word. And, uh, and this morning's lesson, I think, was about faith also. We had some very brave men and women back then that caused us to be where we are today. Because they believe that you have faith. I believe that you have faith. I know you have faith. We are here today under these circumstances, because you believe, as I do. Let's keep going. Let's keep doing that. The announcements have said that we'll be back inside next Sunday. Next Sunday, we'll be back inside. Uh, keep your safe distances. Keep a, uh, a face covering. Be as comfortable as you can with what we have to deal with. But please join us either here or in the parking lot. that it does not have to be done this week. You mentioned that, that this week. Just sometime during the month, just help her out to, to clean the pew up, help us out and do all that. Okay. Take care of stuff. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah. Please keep in mind who we have on our prayer list. The prayer list is lengthy. Um, God knows it, but if we mention them, uh, God, God, God will take care of them. Uh, not just because we mention them, but he likes to hear from us, that's for sure. God answers prayers. Uh, my wife and I can tell you that. We know that. We can feel it when you guys are praying for us. And I pray that you can feel it when we are praying for you. Because we do. We pray for each other one of the year, and especially those on our prayer list. Keep that in mind. We do have those traveling this week. Uh, that is, uh, is a dangerous thing in this time. As always, 